Well, thank you, Renee, and good afternoon, everybody. Just a quick uh, show of hands. Who was here yesterday for my presentation? You guys are the best. Thanks for coming back. Those of you that are here for the first time, my name is Ralph Lardieri. I'm a wellness manager with Wawa, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I'm here directly because of Renee. I met Renee last year at the Employer Benefit Healthcare Congress. And I had a, a presentation there, and Renee gave me the opportunity to come and speak to you all, and I said, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is my first time in the state of Utah, and thanks to Dan, my official guide and fishing partner, um, I'm having a great time. We're doing some other uh, hikes within the next few days, so I'll be around for the entire weekend. But again, I'm just thrilled to be here. My background is in health education. Uh, born and raised in New Jersey, moved to Pennsylvania because of my job with Wawa, and I thought I'd just share with you, those of you obviously who are here for the first time, that's me with my family in Disney World in August, and that's my wife, Anne Marie, and my oldest boy, Luke, is wearing the hat there, and the middle guy is Frank with a kind of funny look on his face, and the little guy is Ralph Anthony. Um, and again, for some of you that have been here, that were here yesterday, a little repetition, but just a show of hands, who's been to Disney World before? Raise your hand. Very nice. Again, I'm blown away. I did not go as a child. I went as an adult. First time for me and my family here, but I'm just amazed at how they pull off the magic every time. It rains, the, the sun comes out, there's a rainbow over the castle, you gotta take a picture in front of that. Isn't that incredible? That's the second time I used that, it doesn't get a, anyway, that's a joke obviously. Uh, but that's my family, we had a great time in August. So let me tell you a little bit more about what I do and who I'm with. I'm with Wawa and oftentimes when I say that, especially out in the Midwest and the West, the common reaction is what the heck's a Wawa? Um, what I'd like to say is we are like a Maverick. I was in a Maverick for the first time the other day. We are a convenience retailer, value-based, service-oriented convenience retailer based in Pennsylvania. And as you can see, 22,000 associates and growing over six states, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia. And we've just a year ago opened up in Florida. So next time you are in Orlando for Disney World or Tampa, check out a Wawa if you don't mind. Um, again, we're 636 stores and counting. We'll grow at about 50 stores a year for the next five years at least. It's pretty exciting for us. It will challenge us in many, many ways. And you can see from a business perspective, $7 billion a year in sales. We serve over a million customers a day, which is pretty exciting. Um, as organizationally, you can see our vision and purpose. We aspire to be fast, casual to go with world-class convenience. We want to do convenience like nobody does, and I think we do a great job doing that. So if you're ever in our footprint, please stop in. And you know, simply put, we exist, what I like to say, to simplify our customers' daily lives. We're friends and neighbors serving friends and neighbors. You know, as the wellness manager, I was fortunate enough to be Wawa's first ever wellness manager. Next year, Wawa will celebrate its 50th year in the business. We're a family-owned, privately held organization that's been around for over 200 years. And they realized we needed to do something around wellness for our associates. Our values value people, delight customers, embrace change, do things right, do the right thing, and passion for winning. Our wellness vision, my vision as wellness manager for Wawa, is that you walk into our store anytime, day or night, and you see fit, happy, high-performing associates delivering great customer service and great for us is an acronym. You'll get a greeting from our associate. They'll be very responsive. They'll make great eye contact with you. They'll give you a smile and they'll say thank you. If we can do that every day, 22,000 associates across six states and give you just an incredible experience and service, we know that you'll come back. That's what we're up to. Oh, and by the way, um, you see on the bottom of every slide, I, I mentioned our values. That's our fit to fly five. And it was really important to me, my background in health education, been in corporate wellness for over two decades, and boy, learning needs to be fun and engaging. So you can see our Fit to Fly 5, eat right, move more, quit tobacco, inspire others, and have fun. And every one of my presentations, any anything we do, there's got to be some fun. This one is no different. So Renee, if you can help me out here, we're going to have some fun in a pretty unique way, and I'm going to turn it over to Renee right now. Okay. How many of you guys remember these from grade school? Okay, we're going to make one, and um, it's going to serve purpose um, a little later in the presentation. So I'm going to teach you how to make one. Um, for those of you that don't remember, so grab a piece of paper. 
Therapy on Friday. This is good Friday <laughs> therapy. Let me get to that, Kathleen. Yes. Said that. Okay, so this is what you should be looking at right now. Right? Square on one side, and then on the other side, you've got your four triangular points going in. Okay, now you're going to put the paper down so that the points are on the table and your nice, neat square is facing up. And now you're going to bend your points again. So you have your nice square. You're going to take your point, and you're going to bend it into the middle with all of your points again. Jack, you want me to come around anybody? Is this familiar? Is this coming back to any of you? Yeah, you guys yeah. see this? How are you doing? I see it. <laughs> okay, so now here's how your what you just folded should be looking like this again. With them flipping out. Yeah. And then your other side looks like this. You got your folded little okay. <laughs> Okay, are we ready? Everybody ready? Yep. So now, with the flippy parts up, you're going to gently fold it in half so that you can, we're going to be able to slip our thumbs in there. So gently fold it in half. Oh, you got it, Tim. That's it. And then you slip your thumb and forefinger into one side. And your forefinger, and you know, you might have to bend the paper a little bit. And when you get in there, then you move. And some, I have to use my chin to get it the first go. But then you can start moving it in and out like this. And Janet's doing it one handed. I need help. 
That's good. That's it. Come on, dog. Like this. When they walk around. Yeah. I'll walk around and help you as my prop's going to continue. Then we're going to use this more later. Yes, this will come into play, literally. All right. So again, fit, happy, high-performing associates, delivering great customer service, having a lot of fun in the process. All right, let's take a look at, uh, again, my background is in health education. I've been studying health and wellness for two decades. Um, I love this. And from a sheer definition, and I'm going to get into this because this is a passion of mine, understanding. If you were to look up health in the dictionary, here's Marion Webster's definition. It is a noun, often attribute health also, and you can see the condition of being well or free from disease, the overall condition of somebody's body or mind, the condition or state of something. Here's the question, here's the challenge for all of us, I believe, as a nation. Um, we are conditioned, I believe, to be very much connected to the disease state of our healthcare system and not necessarily the health side. So what I'm going to ask all of you to do right now is we're going to talk about health. And there's actually some prison, some uh, little brief, small handouts at your table. Grab a handout. Because this is what I need from you. What is your definition of health? And how do you get and stay healthy? And if you don't have anything to write with, there are crayons on the table. OK, so don't hesitate to pick up a crayon. So as a table, let's talk about this as a table. And then we're going to do this for at least three or four minutes. And then as individuals, after you're talking about it, write down your definition of health and how do you get and stay healthy. How's that sound? We OK with that? Because this is going to be more challenging than you think. Because of the way we've been conditioned, I believe, and where our energy and focus typically goes. So this is where we're talking about it as a table. Feel free, converse. I hear a lot of silence. That must be wheels are spinning. What is your definition of health? We've seen Marion Webster's definition. Looks like some of you are stumped. That's OK. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. I want to hear from each table. And those of you that were here yesterday, you know where I'm going with this. I need a spokesperson from each table um, or a leader from each table. So if you could, can I see some pointer fingers, index finger? Let me see your fingers. OK, hands up. Fingers up high. At the count of three, everybody needs to see, I need to see every finger in the air. Come on, wave your fingers, folks. I don't see everybody. That's it. Count of three. Point to the spokesperson for your table. One. Two, three. <laughs> Whoever gets the most votes is a spokesperson. Who is it? I think it's this young lady right there. All right, here we go. What I'd like the spokesperson to do is share briefly the conversation at the table, specifically what, it, what maybe the consensus was, any, any um, in interesting comments, and then please share your definition of health and what you, what you need to do, or how do you get and stay healthy. So let's start right here. If you could stand up, please, that would be great. Introduce yourself. Hi, Melanie Mariner. I work with Academic Advising. Our table talked about how health can incorporate a lot of things. It can help incorporate um, you know, your physical well-being, spiritual, emotional, physical and how there's a lot of different things with it. We talked about how health can be also the opposite of being sick. And then we talked about just, when I was thinking about, I was thinking about being able to do what I want within reason. I'm not gonna go high Mount Everest, but I'd like to be able to go out and do things spontaneously or just on my own. But being able to do what I want to do and feeling like I can in a moment. That's great. How about you just talk about how you get and stay healthy? Did that come up at all in the conversation? <laughs> Um, well, it was mentioned over here too is making time to do it. So sometimes we come home and we're tired and you want to just make something fast, but 
having preparing and having the resources available to do something healthier on the side. Great. Thank you very much. I have a nice round of applause. All right, how about this table? Who's the spokesperson? That's me. I'm Janet. Thanks, Janet. And we had a good discussion. Um, and I was I imposed my own thoughts on everybody. And they were very nice <laughs> and allowed me to do that. But I think uh, the definition of health is very personal because everybody has their own way of approaching it. So my definition of health does not work for most people, and theirs doesn't work for me. So it's a personal state of well-being that allows that person to do what they want and what they can do. And then how to get healthy, stay healthy, is daily choices and daily actions that we choose to take. Thank you very much. How about this table? Right back here. Who's your spokesperson? <laughs> Hello, my name is Amy. We said pretty much what everybody else said. Um, we believe health is feeling good in the absence of disease and to stay healthy. Um, eating well, exercise, good attitude, sense of well-being, and spiritually centered. Great. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Give it up for Dan. All right. I think you guys did a great job on that, by the way. I think we have a real challenge as a culture. Again, what does it mean to be healthy? And to me, it's much more than just an absence of disease. And with that said, let me, um, here's the World Health Organization's definition. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And again, I think, again, the next 20 years for us as a nation are going to be big, and we need to, as a country, create a culture of wellness. And you're already starting to do that here at Sioux, thanks to Renee. Um, I'm fortunate enough, again, to work at Wawa. To me, this really encapsulates, I'm going to show you a video that really shines the light on some of the work that we're doing at Wawa, and to me, sums up wellness um, really in a very unique and special way. Hey everyone, this is Chris Geisens. I am here with Ralph, our wellness manager in Sewell, New Jersey at Store 360. We're just about to go inside for our gold medal life celebration. We've got a wonderful letter from James inside who had a great wellness story. We're here to celebrate it. We're going to have a lot of fun. This is an important part of Wawa on a wellness journey. I hope we're all on it. You're going to hear some great details inside. Ralph, you ready to join me? Do it. All right. June of um, 2012, I was um, went to the doctors and they found a lump on my leg, and um, they thought it might be cancer. I went to the surgeon, and the surgeon's like, "No, it's not cancer. They didn't even have that removed." And it was, it just made me those three weeks of hell waiting for that appointment. 
just made me like I have a little girl at home and a family and I didn't want to leave anyone. And he approached me, asked me if I would be wanting to just show him how to work out. He was really excited to, he thought it was a great idea, so we started working out in October 2012. Um, and then shortly after that, Jim got transferred. Even before I, I left the store, I could see the transformation come from him already and uh, the excitement that he not had for it, but also the excitement that it brought to everybody else. You know, I, Thought that it was since I started, I might as well see it through till the end. So I didn't, I didn't want to give it a give it a half effort. I wanted to make sure I put in everything I had into it, just like he was. It's a lifestyle change. It's not just the diet. It, 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 you can't think of it like that. You have to do like you're changing everything. My starting weight was 377 pounds, and today I'm happy to say that I weigh 267. So I've lost 110. I can't believe what I've been doing now. It's just awesome. Bet you God. The fact that Chris came out here uh, really makes me feel like this company really cares about their employees. I think Jim is doing a great job. He's an inspiration to everybody. Um, everybody in the store, once he started his journey, we all got on board with him, motivated him, and then his motivation made us do better ourselves. We all started our own individual exercise programs, and it's worked out very well for everybody. I just wanted to say that Jim was a big inspiration on me. Um, so far, he's inspired me to lose uh, 30 pounds. Um, he, really, really helped me out a lot. I'm very proud of him. Just a couple things. Um, they refer to Chris, the gentleman who obviously introduced the video. He's our CEO. Um, he was our CFO, and last year uh, he was in a transition period in basically knowing he would step into the CEO position. He is an incredible leader. He's helping us set the tone, communicate the message, and really leading the way. But boy, that just really, I love that story because it really depicts what we're up to and how we can all support one another, and more importantly, building a culture of wellness that allows people really to get on board, to change their lifestyle. And you see Jim talk about the reason he was doing it. Why was he doing this? What really prompted or inspired him to really do this? There's a couple things the way I saw it. What was it? His family. His family. Young daughter. He got a scare. Wait a minute. I, I'm fortunate it's not cancer. I don't want to leave now. I want to be around for my family. That was just huge. Um, so it is pretty exciting. And we're, we, what we've seen now, I've been with Wawa now three and a half years. We're on this wellness journey. We believe in a part of our challenge is capturing each and every one of these stories. We have a, a story like this at every store. We're looking to get like 10 stories like this in every store. We do biometric screenings. We have real challenges at Wawa. After doing four years of biometric screening, we screen about 7,000 folks a year. We have challenges in obesity. We're worse than the national average in obesity. Physical activity, pre-diabetics and diabetics, and smokers. So we need to make some big changes. But as you can see, we're on our way, and it's really just incredibly inspiring and fun. You know, what I like to say, that is a picture of health, specifically of an organization where you have the CEO in the back of that picture there waving his hand. Of course, you got me leading the charge. The young lady, you recognize the young lady in the front there holding that sign up? That's Jim's daughter. Um, Jim is in there, and James who helped them out, and some of Jim and James' uh, co-workers. So boy, to me, that is really what it's all about. And I have an opportunity each and every day to be a part of something really, really special, just as you all have the same opportunity, and that's what you're doing here right now. All right, let's talk about stress a little bit. Uh, raise your hand if you feel some any type of stress throughout your day, typically. Let me see some hands. Come on. Who has? Oh, yeah, there are the hands. Absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I love this. Those of you that were in the session yesterday, this came from, obviously, that little short video I showed. But from a stress perspective, what I need you to do right now on your sheets, um, you can do it on the back of a sheet. Just write down. Let's take a minute for you and as individuals. Write down a list of things that are your top stressors, if you could, okay? And then what I want you to do after you write down maybe four or five or six of those, circle maybe your top home life stress and your top work life stress, if you could. So let's take a couple minutes right now and do that. You got that? All right, let's talk about a little bit. Um, just a couple volunteers. Who'd like to share their top work stress, their top home life stress? Han, thank you very much. Please stand up. Finances, money, yeah, that's a big one. So what, paying the bills, retirement, again, I hear you. So that's a personal one. What about a work one? 
same thing. What exactly do you mean by that? I think I know what you mean by that. Where um, Utah Simple Games is self, it's donated everything and making sure we've got enough money to do it every Ah, okay, I should realize. So it's the same on both. Interesting, <laughs> yes, all right. Anybody else? Who else would like to share? Home stress, work stress. I need a brave volunteer. Thank you very much. Deadlines. Ah, so deadlines. Yes, yes. That's a big one. How about on the home front? Deadlines. Deadlines and deadlines. Yeah. Just a lot going on at home, you mean? And got it. Someone said pay the bills. You know, you have to make sure not only have the money, but pay it on time to not okay. pay a late fee. So Why it's an organization to meet the deadlines so you yeah. don't get it. Again, so much to do, so little time, right? You, you, we th I thought that technology and computers and iPhones were going to help us. But boy, it, by the way, if you have a phone with you currently, just let me see it. Let me see you hold it in your hand and put it high. I'm just, I'm just curious here. Is there anyone in this room that does not have a cell phone? With them. Who does not have a cell phone? i tell you what, let's do that. Who does not have a cell phone with them right now? I'm just curious. Wow, that is really good. How do you do that? That, Dan, I agree. That deserves a round of applause. Because I think for a lot of us, including myself, that is the cause of my stress oftentimes. And that stress is a big thing that we all, I think, as we continue. I think currently in the year 2013, life moves, boy, it moves so, so quickly. And I think from a deadline and from a stress perspective, this is what I'd like you to do now. You all have this sheet in your packet. What I'd like you to do is for each one of these, first, when you are feeling stressed out, I want you, you see a list of emotions here, feelings and emotions. When you're feeling stressed out, I want you to put an S along the line or as close to the word that you often can feel you relate to when you're experiencing stress. Does that make sense? So you're going to put a little S on that line or next to the word. So when you're feeling stressed, you often feel Fearful or do you feel faithful? Or when you're feeling stressed, are you often feeling a lot of worry or hope? Okay, so do that right now. This table in the back is having a great time. I love it. What's going on back there, ladies? I'm coming back there. So just mark where do you often, when, what feelings and emotions are you, are you experiencing when you're feeling stressed? That's what we're trying to tap into here. What feelings and emotion are you experiencing when you're feeling stressed to the max? And to what degree? How close on that scale? There you go. How it's kind of a scale there. It's like a scale. Very good. You got it. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to just flip it a little bit. When you have what you we call the best day at work or in your life, and you're feeling really great about yourself and what you're doing, Put a G next to great, as stands for great, as far as what feelings and emotions are you really locked into. When you're feeling really great about yourself and your work and your life and what you're up to, what feelings or emotions are you experiencing on that scale? How close to that hope or faith or kindness or sympathy? You're basically a happy person. Yes. You should be teaching this then to all of us. And boy, I think from a stress perspective, it's about awareness or self-awareness. And I, and I love this slide so much about being mindful because I think a big challenge for all of us, especially in the year 2013, is that we have one foot in the future like, oh boy, what's going to happen to my kids? I get my kids through college. I got one in the past, oh boy, I can't believe I did that. What am I going to do? How am I going to take care of everything? And we are just so stressed out because we're very rarely in the present moment and being mindful and present in where we are. And the beauty, I think, or the challenge for all of us is to be very aware when we are being stressed out is to be connected, to be present, and come back to where we are because our mind can take us in ways that create a lot of stress. What I'd like to do right now, and I've done this just about all of our GMs is something we're starting to do in every one of our AMGM meetings. If you could, just put your pencils down and your papers down, pull away from your table a little bit, and you want to sit comfortably with both feet on the floor, your hands on your lap, and some of you maybe have already done this before. We're going to do some controlled breathing or a rela little brief mini relaxation exercise. Let me see your index finger again, if you could, fingers in the air. 
Very nice. Find your belly button. Don't push too hard, though, because that'll hurt. Then put the palm of your hand on your belly button. And we're going to do some control breathing, or it's called the relaxation response. In a moment, you're going to close your eyes and breathe deeply. And when you breathe, ideally and physiologically, should your stomach rise, or should your, when you inhale, does your stomach rise or fall on breath? Does anyone know? It would rise. And if you ever watched an infant sleeping, on inhale the stomach rises, on exhale it falls. Don't get hung up on that, but see if you can see when you take deep breaths, see if you can feel your stomach rising and falling. So in a moment I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. You're going to breathe deeply and just stay in the moment and just focus on your breathing. I'm going to stop talking. Close your eyes. You can start doing that right now. Deep, slow breaths. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. Let's talk about that a little bit. How was that, by the way? Have you ever, did you ever do that at work, by any chance? Someone said, oh, yeah. Who said, oh, yeah, back there? I knew it. It was you back there. You do that at work? How often? And where? Where? At your desk, in the restroom? Not in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> that restroom is like sitting on a block of ice. <laughs> I tell you what, I think it's a great habit to get into. In fact, talk about a culture change. We have convenience stores that are open 365 days a year, 24-7. We are basically nonstop from about 5 a.m. till about 3 p.m. And then it slows down a little bit. But again, over a million customers come through our doors every day. When, those, when our folks are feeling overwhelmed or stressed, boy, wouldn't it be great just to pull away for 30 seconds or a minute to center yourself, just focus on your breathing. Does that feel good, by the way, to do that? Does that not feel good? Does anyone in the room meditate on a regular basis? Hands, hands. Okay. Again, or take yoga. Any, any folks into yoga? Again, yoga is all about being mindful, about being present. Again, that's what I'm talking about for as far as creating a culture of wellness and things we can do every day to help us improve our overall state of wellness, plain and simple. All right, let's move forward. I want to share this with you. And, and I, this... I learned of this when I first started my, my corporate wellness career. In 1990, um, I had a great opportunity to work for a company called Life Zones, and we provided a contract for Herman Sporting Goods. That was my first job in corporate wellness. I was the fitness specialist. I was in charge of team sports. These two very, I say, visionary women had their own business, and they created a poster, which I have on my desk on a placard, um, but it was entitled Seven Warning Signs of Health. And you see where they're going with this? Anyone, if you know the warning signs of a heart attack, raise your hand, please. Okay, if you don't, you might, again, oftentimes we're bombarded by warning signs of heart disease, uh, asthma, emphysema. Again, a very much a strong focus on disease. What are the warning signs of health? You ever learn the warning signs of health? I never even heard that before. Let's take a look at these. I think these are pretty amazing. Bright, clear eyes and outer glow. Total ease in mind and inner peace. Boy, that to me describes health. Perfect ease in body and high energy. Daily enthusiasm and enjoyment of life. Again, and if you see, if you see it or recognize that in someone, I think it really is pretty evident. How about successful thoughts and achievements? Greater adaptation and harmony with life. And then the last one I really like also, Feeling of oneness with God in life. We are a part of something special. God in our lives, being a part of life and feeling you're part of something that is truly unique and special. Unfortunately, I think in our culture, we don't see very, many of that, very much of that going on. And I think, again, part of the shift we need to really take is understanding what does it mean to be healthy. It is not something I think, I think we're all born to live long, healthy lives. I said it yesterday, we are miracles of creation that were designed to live long, healthy lives. Unfortunately, due to our culture, due to our habits, due to our purpose or vision or lack of that, 
we create a lot of challenges for ourselves, especially in the area of health. So this is, gets really exciting for me. So we just recently, when I say we, meaning Wawa Wellness, we've partnered with Wellness and Prevention, a Johnson & Johnson company, and they will help us take our wellness program to the next level. They're helping us rethink health, or rethinking health. I went to a, con a conference out in California called Ignite 365, and it was really bringing all thought leaders together to talk about health and how we really need to rethink it. So how about health is taking nothing for granted, really understanding that life is a gift, letting go of fear, Doing what you love, to me, boy, that's health. Sharing joy, finding beauty. Health can be many things, as you all said in part of the conversation today. Being engaged with your health means being engaged with your life. And obviously, it's safe for, for me to say that everyone in this room, obviously, you're engaged with your life and your work and your family. You're here now. I don't think you wouldn't be here if you, you, wouldn't be here if you were not. So what I'd like to do now is show you a video, and this came from this video specifically. And I think it just really just does a tremendous job and help us to redirect our focus truly in the area of health. talk of disease in there and it's around health? Did you notice any diseases mentioned there? I didn't. To me, boy, what a powerful message. I think most of you intu intuitively have gotten that already. Renee, if you can help me, we want to do a little exercise right now with the little piece of paper we created, something fun. Okay, so on these um, parts of your thing um, you want to write numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever you want. You want to kind of keep them low, don't go over 12. So hold it down so that you can write on it. Daniel? You have to do yours. But uh, everybody understand? Write a number. Write a number on there. On the outside. On the outside. Write a number on the outside. Write a number on the outside. Back to our news here. One, two, three, four. Go here. <laughs> okay. That's right. Doesn't have to be in order. So you have four squares on this top, right? Okay. Now flip it over. And you've got four triangles again, but they're divided in half. So now, number those, but use, use the half. So you have, you'll have up to eight numbers. So just number whatever you want to. Eight numbers on the inside. Or you can do colors too. Your colors, and then there you go. If you want to, it's quite all right. Letters. Letters. Very nice. 
Okay, now here's where the fun comes in, but not having fun yet. Okay, now open it up. Lift up your second set of numbers. So you're going to be looking at your piece like this. And again, you're going to have your four triangles sticking out and eight spaces. And on each space, on um, you have each triangle, and on one half of each triangle, you talk about your definition of health. Now, this isn't a long phrase. It can just be one word. So like, uh, like I might put Danny is one of my definitions of being healthy for my children. Um, and then on the second half of the triangle, put a little message that you want the person that you're going to play this game with to receive. So like, you look nice today. I'm glad you're here. You made a difference to me. Isn't it a beautiful day? OK, understand? A lot of blank looks looking at you right now. So again, health is a very personal thing. What is health to you? And we probably won't have time to finish this out, but you can start that. Write that in there. And maybe you can bring it back and play with your coworkers that are not here right now, or a family member or a friend. So bring it back to your children. I know, I'll tell you what, for some folks, this may be challenging because we don't think about it this way. And boy, really try and understand what's important to us, what brings us the greatest joy, what makes us enthusiastic, joyful, what helps us to experience love in the most incredible ways. To me, that's living, that's health, that's life. And oftentimes, I think in our culture, we just don't get those messages. It could be your slogan, you know, like, you go. make it a great day, or whatever you like to say to people. That doesn't have cuss words. <laughs> what? I'm going to start all over. I know. <laughs> <Raise your hand. laughs> We're going to move on, but I think, again, that was a very creative and unique way to kind of engage around health. Thank you for playing along. You can finish that if you desire to do that uh, afterwards. Right at the end, we'll do we, we can play a little bit, all right? I'm going to come back to disconnect to connect, but let's talk a little bit about purpose and the power of purpose. And I think ultimately that's what this exercise is helping us really to understand what are our own personal values, what's our own really mission in life and purpose. Um, Dr. Jim Lair, I've been fortunate enough to have been studying him now for probably over two decades. It's really kind of an amazing story. He's a sports psychologist that worked with Dan Jansen and Pete Sampras and the highest level Olympic and professional athletes. And he wrote a book called Mental Toughness Training for Life, Mental Toughness Training for Sports. He talks about our greatest challenge as human beings is identifying our ultimate mission in life and then finding and following the path that will take us there. Boy, you find out what your mission and purpose is and you get on path, that is powerful. And to me, that's health. Without purpose or clarity in your mission, the storms of life can become overwhelming. And I think Boy, that's where we experience a lot of stress. Because let's face it, life will provide many, many storms. But if we're not clear what our values and what our purpose and our mission is, it is so easy for those storms really to overwhelm us and really take us out. Wawa, yeah, we're specific. We, we've, been in, we've been working with HBI, the Human Performance Institute, and Dr. Jim Lair, talking about health from an energy perspective. And you can see full engagement. He also wrote a book called The Power of Full Engagement, which was his latest book along with The Power of Story. The ability to intentionally invest your full and best energy right here, right now, in these four dimensions of energy, which he talks about physically, mentally, uh, men physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And we understand that we are four-part beings, and we have a clear understanding how our energy and how we live life impacts our health and wellness. So we will be taking the next big step in having all our senior leaders during the process of going through this program. Part of my job will be taking this program in one way, shape, or form or another to all 22,000 associates. And again, for me, that is just incredibly exciting. You know, we talk about being in the zone. And when you are on purpose and doing what you love to do, I talked a little bit about this yesterday, 
I call it flow in action or being in the zone. You see uh, someone, there's an orchestra conductor, uh, someone surfing, kid at a computer, someone obviously winning, winning a race. Being in a moment, being on purpose, loving what you do, it's an incredible experience. Anyone ever experience a zone moment or being in flow? Anyone know what I'm talking about there? Anyone experience that? It is pretty interesting, and we have the ability, I'd say, to create that in, uh, more often than we think when we are on purpose. So before I get to this slide, let me just show you one more quick video. Disconnect to connect. I did mention the cell phone thing earlier. And I think because we are moving at such a fast pace in our life and our culture and have access to so much information, it's harder and harder to be in the moment and enjoy the beauty of really what's around us each and every day. Oh, you know what? This one's here. All right, let's take a look at this. This is the end. My oh, earliest gosh. memory of songwriting is writing the. You don't need to speak that language to get what they're trying to convey there. Obviously, that was a, a, a commercial from Thailand. Actually, I think it was a phone company, too, believe it or not. Um, but, boys, I think captures that in an incredible way. So let's just, I think we're winding this down. Right, Renee? Here's a challenge for each and every one of you. Let's face it. We could spend literally days, day and a half. The corporate athlete program is a two and a half day program. They have a one day program. In the end, what's your purpose? What's your mission in life? And understand that, boy, you come, become really clear on what that is. There's a very deep and profound connection to our overall well-being and health. Um, questions, comments? Guys, did you enjoy that? Was that helpful, I hope? Question, thank you. Well, a couple of comments. Sure. One on the, on the phone video. I live in a rural area and I was just walking in the street and a couple of uh, people were, you know, on their horses just riding by me, you know, just going, going in a slow place. Pretty soon they pull out their cell phone and I thought, what's wrong with this picture, you know? You're supposed to be relaxing, enjoying things and, you know, immediately pulled out the cell phone. The other thing on the video where it showed the, the bus and giving up your seat, it seems like a little thing, but you have to stop and realize how good you feel when you do something nice Bingo. for somebody else. Absolutely. You know, it's such a great feeling. It is a great feeling. To me, that, that's health in, in the biggest and best way. Guys, we'll end with, you want to play a little bit with your partner if that's done. And uh, I, again, thank you for the time and the opportunity to spend some time with you. I wish you all the best of health. And um, thank you for being just uh, great participants. Renee, you want to end with anything? Thank you very much, thank you.